Rugby Wrap-Up brought to you in part by Sheehy Auto Stores. It's easy at Sheehy. The Pig and Whistle, the world's best rugby pump. And Lean and Limber, stretching your way to a healthier lifestyle. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to The Rugby Odds, starring former WWE champion John Bradshaw Layfield. God's gift to rugby, gift a Belu of the Gift Time Rugby Network, and featured guest, former Nola Gold head coach Nate Osborne. Hey, it's good to see you again. Thank you for being here. And uh, as you know, I do the heavy lifting in the first part of the show while John Bradshaw Layfield, the WWE legend, Gift A. Bailu, Rugby's Gift to Mankind, and Nola Nate Osborne, the former Nola Gold head coach, do absolutely nothing in the green room, which is 10 times more than they do on camera. But let's not dilly-dally. Let's not quibble. Let's get right to the Major League Rugby recap. The Utah Warriors hosted the Toronto Arrows. And first off, great crowd. Kudos to Warriors Nation. Toronto scored on a power play goal with a Warrior in the box for roughing. Or in more familiar vernacular, they scored a try while Utah had a guy in the sin bin. And Sam Malcolm drop kicked the conversion. Williams, Crusay, and Teo, however, combined for the go-ahead try, which had Brian Ray of America's Rugby News spewing, same old, same old, eh? Just tyrannic crap, eh? On Twitter. Brock Webster got Brian Giddy though, with a great try and a great mane of hair. Wait, that's redundant. Anyway, Jack McRogers also got one for the Arrows, and Utah were then worried Warriors. But they got back on the warpath and had a chance to tie, but went for the win and lost. Toronto wins 27-24. Los Angeles hosted San Diego, who looked very good in frigid New York in a tough loss at death, while questions about Giltini's being overhyped were humming all over Hollywood. Were they has-beens in just a year? Well, no. A Tion Lutz yellow card and some Legion mistakes with ball, combined with a great effort from the hosts, had LA sipping Giltini's from the Cali Cup while firing a warning shot to the league that the defending champions still can play the rugby. Los Angeles wins 26-13. The Dallas Jackals hosted the Seattle Seawolves and both teams needed a win for different reasons. Dallas was looking for their first ever win in franchise history while the Seawolves were trying to end a three game losing streak and stay in the playoff hunt. The visitors dominated the match behind player of the match, Rickert Hadink and Matt Dorian Gray Turner, who went from executive hydration specialist, AKA water boy, to starting fullback. Seattle tamed the feisty Jackals 34 to 12. The Austin Gilgronies hosted the New England Free Jacks in an East versus West battle, and many thought that the Free Jacks would retreat with a loss, particularly because Captain Josh Larson and superstar Bodine Walker were reserves. The Free Jacks, who are no longer flying under the radar though, proved definitively that they are a top side, winning 25-17. They also proved to be good sports at the airport and gave me a lift on the team bus. Down in the Big Easy, the NOLA Gold were trying to make things difficult on Rugby New York, who, like Los Angeles a couple of three weeks ago, had a fly half emergency situation on their hands. No problem, as the visitors moved former All Black scrum half Andy Ellis to number 10 while getting Caleb Geiger his first start, spelling Dylan the Fawcett Butcher, who, like Sam Windsor, came on in the second half, both earning their 50th caps in Major League Rugby. Kudos to both, as New York gets five points on the road in an Eastern Conference battle, 30-19. Atlanta's Rattlers slithered into the District of Columbia to face a snake-bit Old Glory DC side. The home team, like the Jackals, were still looking for a first win of the season while Atlanta came in with but one loss. And it was Atlanta who prevailed over the hard-nosed hosts, 27-13. All right, we got to take a quick break, but we'll be back with John Bradshaw Layfield, Gift A. Bailu, and Nate Osborne after this. Need a great price on a new vehicle? Sheehy makes it easy. Easy Price shows you our lowest prices on the Mid Atlantic's largest selection. Find your best price online or at any of our 31 dealerships. It's easy at Sheehy. Sheehy.com. If you're in New York City and want to watch some great rugby, have some great food, and some great times, go to the world's best rugby pub. The Pig and Whistle on West 36th Street. And 
and we're back. Okay, folks, we have the guys back in from the green room. They've been doing absolutely nothing. But Gift is in an airport in Panama City. John is in Pennsylvania. And Nate is looking off camera in Australia, down in, uh, I think it's, what is it, Queen Bien? Queen Bien? Queen Bien, mate. God's country, down here. <laughs> you, you sounded more Australian, Nate, after a couple of three <laughs> days down there. <laughs> Yeah, that's good. I want to keep that accent, mate. People thought I sounded a little bit American because I was saying gas station and things like that. But um, yeah, <laughs> back to Australian. Is that a knife? You, you haven't been to America in a while. We can't afford to say gas station these days. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of knives, John, you want, might want to stick some into your face after your performance last week. Another wooden spoon performance for John Bradshaw Layfield, everybody. What? Despite the fact that it was a, an off week for the three of us, we were all three and three. So, John, at two and four, you're our wooden spoon winner of the week. Congratulations, John Bradshaw Layfield. How about you wooden spoon, Matt? <laughs> <laughs> okay, now John, the best part about this is you get a chance to redeem yourself, John. As my voice goes up, you get a chance to redeem yourself. Do I have to wear no. a stupid suit like you're wearing right now? This is Brooks Brothers. <laughs> it's our newest sponsor. You're all going to get one of these. Okay, you'll all get one of these. First matchup, ATL hosting New England, who had a big win against John's Gilgronies last week. John, it's ATL at home in the snake pit, minus three. I'm taking ATL. They, they looked fantastic last week. I think ATL, look, I also like New England. This is going to be the game of the week. Absolutely no doubt about it. But ATL playing at home, I think Hot Lana here takes it. Give, lay the three points. Oh, gift, gift. The power of life university. Is it still pulsed through your veins when you're looking at ATL? Or are you picking New England, the tea sippers? I hate, I know you hate anything Northeast. I do, but that's besides the point. The reason is, look, ATL did great last week, but New England did it better, and they've been showing their fire more and more i'm giving this new england's gonna take this one ending out in the sweaty zone of life university atlanta getting the points and the win on this all right nate he obviously doesn't know that they don't play at life university anymore so that that life university stuff has to come through the snake pit now are you going with them no mate i actually uh i think new england's gonna win as well i am mean, really impressed with new england I, I like that they uh each week they build and they get better and better i said last week and i i stick to it that uh atlanta is a very consistent team but i think that new england's got too much the free jackals mate as soon as you call them the free jackals they've been on fire I take free. I told. I take full credit for the free jacks. Here's an ale tip uh, to them, John. Are you drinking you during the show? No wonder your intro is so terrible. Your intro is the worst I've ever seen. We had we had to do it like 16 different times, so people will see the final edit. But it's only because you pay somebody to make you look like we, you actually have some type a modicum of sense. Uh, John, that is so unfair. A and B. When you're two and four, you can talk all the smack you want, but everybody looks at you for what you are. A loser. And speaking of winners and losers, I'm sticking with my 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 free jacks. I I, I get I, I get I'm in the airport. They're in the airport. I get off a plane. I go to their practice. Their captains run in Austin because and I also picked them. I come back to the hotel on the bus with them, and then after it all, we're in the airport, and there they are again. So I got some video of them. You can look at that there. So I'm going with my friends, the Free Jacks. They're going to win this one on the road. How about them apples? So you're a jock sniffer. You're a free jackal groupie is what you are. You're yeah. hanging around a bunch of athletes. Yeah. Oh, hey, look at me. Other than me being an athlete, can I carry your bag? the bus. Out, out here cheating on rugby New York, too. We're out here cheating yeah, on yeah, Steve. Right. That's Steve, right. Steve, did you let's good? See, let's see what you're picking against rugby New York. <laughs> the next one up, the Old Glory DC struggling, uh, to say the least. They're hosting in New Orleans, who is also looking pretty pretty soft right now john are you going with your whole nick cage voodoo that lebeau thing or are you going to take old glory your neighbor as you drive in paul sheehy's car who is a co-owner of the team paul sheehy's car is awesome by the way i mean absolutely fantastic and paul sheehy is a great neighbor now watch this watch this watch the switch <laughs> unfortunately <laughs> D.C. is having a rough year, and it's not going to get any better, I don't think. They are minus 144 on point differential right now. Worse than the league. Dallas is minus 160. They played one more game, so D.C. has the worst per game of any team. They have zero points. And I just don't uh, – last week they, they looked like they looked good at the end of the second half. 
I think it's because the team that was leading them let the foot off the gas. I don't think it's because all of a sudden they started playing well. And unfortunately for D.C., I don't think that nothing changes this season. And I think they're going to lose this game to Nala, and uh, Nala is my pick. All right, he's taking Nala, whoever that is, uh, at minus six. Gift, you were smart enough to not bet with your heart last week. You bet New York last week. Yeah, you know, and then and, and it had a terrible week as a result. So I wonder if there's a correlation. <laughs> <laughs> thus, the, thus the air, the sitting in an airport in Panama City. Look, you know, you know, and and still so much more to go. Still that crazy Northeast, and as a result of even that, I have to rectify this, get my week back. Look at New Orleans to be able to take this one with the points, with the win. I mean, look, this you're not gonna get many out of New Orleans because, like I said three weeks ago, and I was being told I was wrong. Mental reconstruction happening in New Orleans. We are <laughs> reconstruction, but New Orleans will take this one uh, with a point, and they don't. <sighs> we got problems. Oh, doctor. Oh, doc- <laughs> Nate. Nate. Yeah. Gift is Gift's biting me. He's biting me to go on one of my rants. You picked New Orleans last week. You picked the girl I that did. broke up with you. And you're going to do it again? I did. Uh, mate, they're both struggling. They both played actually some good good rugby in the last 15 minutes of the game. So whoever comes out firing is going to probably run over the top of the other one. But I think that uh, New Orleans is they're struggling, but they're, they've at least won a couple of games and they're actually better on the road. The jet lag might get New Orleans, but I think uh, I think New Orleans is going to win. I think DC is just uh, a team that looks unhappy and they're struggling. All right. Well, I'm call, me, call me crazy. Call me nutty. We do. I'm going with all glory. Are you I'm taking up? the six. You I'm taking up. the six. <laughs> they got to win sooner or later. And this is the the banana peel match for New Orleans coming off the pretty poor performance. Nate said they played well in the last. Andy Ellis last played fly minutes. half. Andy Ellis played fly half. He's an all black. Okay, but he's a scrum he's been half. He's playing since he was two. He's been all right, playing next, rugby since he was two. He can play, next, he can play fly next half. Next week he's playing tight head. Is that so your dummy? Black? You flip a coin nine times, it comes up heads every time. What's the odds it comes up tails the next time? It's 50 50, you dummy. They don't have to all of a sudden <laughs> win just because they've been losing, okay? The odds don't change. <laughs> oh, that good. Is the dumbest man. thing I've I'm ever a, I'm heard in my life. Right. I'm going to go play the roulette wheel because it came up red two times. It's got to come up black. I'm going to put my mortgage on it. You dumb. So <laughs> stupid. So stupid. Seattle hosting Los Angeles. Los Angeles minus six points, John, going into the Starfire fire pit, if you will, of uh, Tequila. Washington. Hey, the gladiators out of LA look good last week. I said they look like a team of superstars that didn't play as a team. They corrected that last week, maybe because they didn't have a long training camp, maybe because they got their players right up to the start of the season. They looked awesome. They're a three and three club that is much better than three and three. I think they go in to the black hole of Seattle and they roll them boys. How about that? They roll them boys. Well, by the way, when you said uh, about teams rolled them boys last week, they were 0 and 3. Uh, Gift, what's your take on this one? That is not true. Cauliflower people? (laughs) Cauliflower, green cauliflower people, broccoli people, are they going to beat the. the one, what do, you, what do you call the people from LA? What do you, what, it, doesn't, what? it doesn't matter because it's not what they are anymore. But what they are, what they are is the power of petty. And I told you last week, the power of petty was going to take over and take the win. But unfortunately, I don't think the power of petty maintains itself as consistently as one would like it to be. LA is still a team that is still trying to find itself, still missing so many key pieces from last year. I don't think that this last week was resonant. And I actually look and expect that these, uh, the broccolis, are going to end up taking this one into high altitude. Really? Yeah, uh, it's Seattle. Seattle's going to get wow. the points on this one. Ugh. And ladies and gentlemen, I don't know if you've noticed, but this is the jazz radio station DJ version of Gift A. Beilu because he's <laughs> he's hiding from the authorities in a, in a Panama City airport. So I like this version. <laughs> I like this. Uh, I feel so restrained. I feel so restrained. Uh... Yeah, he's, he's holding back. It's like he's, it's killing him. His eyes are going to pop any second. <laughs> Uh, Nate, yeah. you got to redeem yourself a little bit here. And how does it start with LA beating Seattle in Seattle? I think I think Seattle Seattle will win. Seattle's defense up there is too good. I think uh, LA still have the, too many mistakes in them right now. They still drop the ball a fair bit. Um, I don't think they're a team. They did look a little bit better last week. I agree, but um, Seattle also had a good win on the road. I think Seattle go back up there. Seattle are a team to beat. 
in that side of the draw. I think that they're a good team, so I'm going to go Seattle. I'm going to disagree with you because I think that LA showed that they have the heart of the champion, and that and they were not they were overestimated they were overlooked by some of us here on this panel last week. Or any the 42 year old IE is playing like he's 35 again. He's starting to really. He's clicking. He's doing so well. You're riding my coach. Got you're some players coming in because I made sense. No, I didn't even hear you. I had I had you <laughs> muted in my headset. So I'm going. I'm going, John. That is utterly ridiculous. <laughs> Just writes itself. Uh, I'm going with Los Angeles on the road because they beat a much better team in San Diego than the team that Seattle beat in Dallas. Will it be within six points? Maybe, but I'm still going to take L.A. laying the points. I'm sorry, Adrian Balfour. Next one up, Utah, the Mountain Men, hosting the Sabercats. John, will the Cats claw the Warriors enough and use the two points that they're getting on the road? Two points isn't much, especially a toss-up. So the Mountain Men, I think, are going to hold home court. I think that uh, Houston is not that good a team. They, they played decently well at home. They don't play that well on the road. And I think it's going to be on like Donkey Kong on the mountain is what I think. You know, I get to look out this window here in Panama and just get to see these beautiful mountains. And uh, they just aren't as high as I really imagined them to be. And that's how I feel about Utah. Every time I put my eye and hope in Utah, they've almost disappointed me majority of the time. And I look at this Houston team, they have, they have no real identity, but they get their weird close wins and annoying close losses. I look at Houston to be able to go up after the break Take down Utah, give Utah back to back passes again. And uh, yeah, no more disappointing me. Gift, I don't mean to correct you geographically, uh, but uh, Panama is, has a canal through it. It's not really known for mountains. What I'm seeing over here, these beautiful mountains over here, these great hills, these lovely valleys. Well, hills. no, make no sense. <laughs> what, what is your definition of points? <laughs> I stand corrected. Nate. Utah has to be uh, bursting at the seams right now with a loss of opportunity and points. As a coach, Nate, I know you're at home, but Toronto races out to the lead or gets has a lead. You come storming back, and now you have a chance at the end of the match to kick for points and tie the game as it ends and take home two bonus points with a tie. Instead, you don't go for the posts, you blow it, and you get nothing. What would you have done? You get one, right? You get one because you're only three down. All right, gone. you get one. All right, okay. I, Details, I, facts. You're going to throw facts in my face. I, I 100% back them to do that. That's what I would have done as well. If you look back at NOLA in year two, we had three opportunities to take points at the end, and we went for the try and got the try every time. So you're gambling five points. To get one extra bonus point, I think when you're that far down and you're having a struggling year like Utah, are, they did the right thing. You got to go for the try. You got to go for the win. If your team is happy with draws and if your team comes off the field and they're excited that they got a draw, then that's uh, that's a team that doesn't isn't in it to win it, right? So uh, I expect Utah to bounce back. I, I think Utah's got too many points in them. I don't think Houston can score tries. Uh, I think any team that's shown that they can uh, go wide on them and and have a bit of a go with the ball, like Dallas did against them, even. Uh, they struggle. And I think that Utah's a team that can go wide on them. And I think Utah will uh, win, 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 in a, win in a canter, actually. Win in a canter. Win in a canter. Yeah, because Nate is a man. Did General George Washington go for a tie against the Brits? <laughs> Did Sam Houston go for a tie against Santa Ana? Did Patton go for a tie against Rommel? No, because they're men like Nate. I'm going to take my cartoon suit off there and fly down there and kick your ass. <laughs> you couldn't kick my ass if you tied oh. me to a tree. Oh, please. <laughs> Two hits. Me hit you, you hit the floor. Get lost. Hit the road. I'm taking... I'm taking the Saber Cats on the road. You would have gone for a tie, wouldn't you? Even after yeah. all of this. Yeah, I would have taken Pat, the extra point. After it's general professional George sports. It's after perfect. Sam Houston, you would have gone for a tie, wouldn't you? Yeah. Oh. It means nothing, man. That one point is not going to hurt him. Oh, they watch. Need to win. Watch now. Watch. Watch. You just jinxed him. Right. New York versus Toronto. New York minus six in Hoboken. John? New York, I think, wins this. They're going to roll them boys. Look, Toronto is a good team. Uh, Toronto, I think I was wondering whether they were a really good team or just kind of an average team. I think they're a very good team. But I think New York is a better team, and they play better at home. And uh, I agree with Nate about the field. 
They should have had some home field advantage. They don't. But I think New York rolls them boys. Gift, your friends from the north. Oh, man, you, you, you put me in a pickle. And in, in uh, no, I don't have a pun for that. You know what? I don't care about Toronto. I, I, they, they did better than I expected. They keep showing one side, then bring it up on the other side of whether they're good or bad. But they can play. They can go. And uh, but I have to say, uh, New York really is a better team. Ah. <laughs> New York really. <laughs> <laughs> better team in this situation new york at home in their cursed jersey area but somehow managed to get these wins out give it to new york for the points and the win okay uh cursive nate it's a tough one mate um i don't think new york plays well at home i think that field really hurts them i think it showed when they went to the gold mine the wide field at, at the gold mine they they came out swinging and going wide that's the team that they put together they built a team around playing wide, fast rugby. And on that field that they've got at home, they can't do it. Toronto's a physical team. And any team that's gone down there and been physical has beaten New York. But I actually think Toronto will win on the road based on New York's home field. I'm not the only one who says that field is cursed. Ask your landlord why he picked such a narrow field for his team to play when he built a team based on wide fast ball. I, I don't I don't I don't bother my landlord. I don't you, get, bother hey, my hey, landlord. you get your landlord because you live in his hindquarters. Whoa, <laughs> whoa, I see what you did there. New York is going to beat. Oh the come on. You you've never picked against New York. Ever. Rangers over the Maple Leafs <laughs> by eight. And yeah, New York's good. I didn't say New York's not good. They're a good team. I still think they're going to come out winning the West. I hold that thought. We're taking a quick break. I've been blind since I was four. And I've never seen a beer commercial or a beer label. None of that stuff influences me. I drink beer because of the taste. And my beer is Pabst Blue Ribbon. It has a taste on the flavor. What do you think is on the label? I think there's a, a naked woman riding on a unicorn jumping over fire. Oh, that's good beer. All right, on that note, guys, we're out of time. Final thoughts, John. Atlanta. And the Free Jackals, game of the f-ing week. That's going to be awesome in hot Atlanta. I cannot wait to watch it. I think Atlanta probably has the edge, but uh, I'm not very certain about it. I'm certain it's going to be a great game. Can't wait to watch it. I agree with you on that, John. Pigs just flew by my face. Uh, gift? Your face looks like a pig. Whoa. A pig's hindquarters. <laughs> Make some bacon out of your well, face. Well, that would be that would be like a girlfriend for you in Bullfrog Flats, wouldn't it? Gift. <laughs> Look, whether we go down to the Panama Canals or rise up to those Panama Peaks, one way or another, I still don't care about Canada as anyway. And that's all I gotta say. I just know. <laughs> Panama Peaks. <laughs> uh, Nate. As John invented this statement, lipstick on a pig for various reasons. Yeah. Final thoughts. Yeah, I agree. Atlanta, uh, New England will be a cracker. Uh, and I'm looking forward I'm looking forward to uh, most of the games, actually. I think NOLA, D.C. could be a, a good game with two teams that are struggling. But, you keep uh, going to the NOLA, Will. The what is wrong with you? What is I think it's going to be a good you? game, man. I think it's going to be a good game. I, I don't actually care who wins, <laughs> truthfully. Uh, but it would be good to see somebody get their season back on track a little bit because uh, sitting at 0-6 and 2-4, and can't be good for anybody, and I want the league to be good, and I want uh, crowds to turn up, and sometimes people just abandon if you're losing. So hopefully uh, one of those teams gets back on track. But, uh, yeah, Atlanta, Free Jacks, can't wait for that one. Okay. So, Matt, go ahead and say something about how well-endowed Steve Lewis is or something. Whatever you want to do to suck up to him, go ahead. I will say this. I will say this. I have found out uh, uh, from the other show that Joe Peterson has a size 12 foot and great calves. They have big feet, mate. You know what they say about that? Big shoes. On that note, <laughs> I want to thank Mr. John, Bradshaw, Layfield, Mr. Gift A. Bailey, Mr. Nate Osborne, and thank you for tuning in and making some money with us or losing it. And please uh, subscribe on YouTube. Please uh, so- sign up for our newsletter. And please check out our other segments, including our Major League Rugby Highlight Show and our College Rugby Wrap-Up. And sign up for our American Red Cross Blood Donor team. <laughs>